Hello, I'm Dr. George Andros, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about the care of the diabetic foot. No one should be surprised that the nationwide epidemic of diabetes mellitus will bring in its wake an untold increase in complications. Diabetic foot ulceration is already the number one cause for hospitalization of a diabetic and aging of the baby boomer generation will result in more dollars spent and legs amputated. Anyone who has been watching the way that vascular surgeons manage arterial disease in the leg, so-called PAD, is amply reminded of the so-called endovascular revolution and how the treatment of severe lower extremity arterial disease has shifted away from open surgical revascularization. I would like to point out that it isn't just the treatment that has changed. The arterial occlusive disease has also changed. Thirty years ago, when endotherapy quietly crept into the vascular consciousness, the principal cause for severe arterial insufficiency, gangrene and amputation, was plain old garden variety large vessel arteriosclerosis. Smoking, dyslipidemia, and hypertension were the culprits for causation. But today, things are different. Diabetes mellitus, primarily type 2, is now far and away the predominating cause for ulceration, gangrene, and amputation. The amputations are occurring in record numbers. It is estimated that there are 90 to 100,000 major non-traumatic amputations in the United States annually, and 80 to 90 percent of these occur in diabetics. On a worldwide basis, every 30 seconds a diabetic undergoes a major amputation. The reason that so many limbs are lost is that it takes more than diabetic arterial disease to destine the diabetic to an amputation. When a limb becomes at risk, it is nearly always preceded by an ulceration. That may originate with trauma, like stepping on a nail or an ill-fitting shoe. The diabetic is all too often unaware of this problem because diabetes has caused neuropathy, which is a form of nerve damage that renders the foot insensate and unable to perceive pain. The ulcer is then unintentionally ignored or may be further aggravated by a bony deformity that also results from diabetic neuropathy. Early diagnosis and treatment with antibiotics, together with local care of the ulcer, and alleviation of pressure on the foot, which is called offloading, will position the patient to heal the ulcer and any associated infection. The older diabetics who are perhaps cigarette smokers and have other comorbidities such as high blood pressure, cholesterol problems, also have associated problems with the circulation of the foot. This produces neuroischemia, which is an amalgamation of neuropathy and arteriosclerosis. These complex cases, the foot ulcer is nearly impossible to heal unless the circulation of the foot and the ulcer can be increased. In some cases, this blood flow enhancement can be achieved with minimally invasive techniques using balloon angioplasty. But in many, nothing less than a surgical bypass will restore the circulation and forestall amputation. And so it requires many skills and many specialists to lift the burden of amputation from patients, their families, and the community at large. When all the diverse specialists work together as a coordinated team, it has been shown that amputation rates can be reduced to an absolute minimum. And we as doctors always work hard to remember that what is at the center of that team is the patient. This briefing has been made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, please visit vascularweb.org.